and welcome. I'm Master Lama Rasaji, and this is our Friday Shangri-La edition of Rasaji Speaks. I hope you're doing well and have had a great week. It's been a phenomenal week for us at COC here. It's not too late to sign up for live training today if you want to. It'll be a very interesting training. And you can see why a couple hundred people like to tune in every Friday from around the world. Our subject matter today is going to be spiritual resilience, Krishna's wisdom in a modern chaos. Krishna was going through a very similar time. We're kind of getting close to the bell curve of Krishna. If you remember, Krishna was born in 3000 plus BC. That's right. About 1500 to 2000 years before Boganatha, our first Lama, to give you an idea. Where we're at today is he was going from the Treta into the Dharpara Yuga. And immortalists were beginning to not dwell on immortality anymore because the dark side, as we moved into the night of God, was beginning to take over. So there became clashes and a great holy war went on. That's right. If you can imagine, when I was in India, I was able to, in Raniket, and Raniket is a place in India, northeast India, where uh, Yogananda Kunda talks regularly about when he's early meeting his master, Sir Yikteswa. It's referred to as the desert city. It will remind you a lot of the Tucson from Phoenix to Tucson area uh, in the Southwest. You don't, you get above in a plane, you don't see a lot of green. And if you have green, they have to have an incredible irrigation system to do that. So in that area, there are ruins that are literally 5,000 plus years old. You said, how in the world could something stick around? Well, when you made chariots with copper and gold and flashes of silver, and if you understand how God's precious metals could stand the test of time, then it'll make sense, right? Just think about that for a while. It was amazing. And some of those chariots are buried in the sands up there. When I was bathing up there, it would give me chills just to see. And they were huge chariots. They could hold two or three people with no problem. Absolutely no problem. Usually there was a driver in the front. And they kind of curl around, rounded one of these. And the driver was in front, right? With anywhere from about five to eight white stallions, depending on who they were which money they had, their classification, whatever. Then there was one or two warriors on the side that had spears stacked everywhere. They could pick them up and throw them. And usually there was a spear thrower on one side. There was an archer on the other side. So it was just... Shh, and I mean, I'm telling you, they had 50 to 100 of those things. Then they had swords tucked in underneath that when they would run out of sword or they'd get to a point they would have to get off the chariot, the chariot driver then would release one or two of the swordsmen and then they would get down and start to fight. So it was a very in, ingenious way that they did things. On the main chariot was our genuine, the archer, and of course, Krishna, Lord Krishna was there. So Krishna, in his discourse to Arjuna, 
And a lot of the passage that come up in the Bhagavad Gita, he makes reference to focus only on the love and the light of the divine. The dance of the lilas, the play of God. And he said, basically, what we're doing, you can choose to either focus on the chalice or focus on the mission. It's your choice. It's always been your choice. It's just until you got here with us, it's become more clear what that choice is. And when you take an army of light beings, people using their mala garlands, and they focus on that same frequency, that frequency intensifies. Now, here we are today. We're coming to the end of the wooden dragon, getting ready to move in the first part of the year to the wooden snake. So we go from an airborne animal into one that goes on the ground and on the belly and moves forward more directly to the target itself. That's what you're after. We soared in 24, we're arriving in 25. Look what has been created and look what's getting ready to happen. Think about this, right? What has happened has been that we spent three years laying an internet foundation of webinars to teach people their siddhanas. That's right. To give you over a dozen ways to connect to the divine on a daily basis and in a moment's notice. And learn to be the eye of the storm and not the storm. Here I am in Florida. We're in peak hurricane season. Buddy, howdy, do we know the difference between being the eye of the storm or the storm. We just had Debbie come through and we saw Debbie start out in the Lesser Antilles and didn't leave until the, she got off the coast of the Northeast. Dropped a lot of rain, a lot of wind. But we're not even in peak. We're getting close to peak. It's interesting. Peak of storms are coming as we go from retrograde or the end cycle into direct, the yang cycle of retrograde, right? Think about it. You think things don't happen. You don't think God and his forces are not in control. He's, he's always in control. So Krishna said, focus on the mission. Focus on the path, the dharma. Never relinquish the path of the Dharma because that's the prize. No matter what's going on around you, that's the prize. And miraculous things would happen to Krishna and the followers of Krishna, just like miraculous things happen after Jesus's ascension and assumption, right? Remember yesterday, we just celebrated the Holy Mother's assumption, right? Miraculous things happen if you focus on the mission. Never take your eye off the prize. That's incredible important, right? You can focus on the chalice. Does it mean the chalice is out there? Of course. But in every yuga, whether we're in the Kali, the Dot Power, the Treta, the Sata, the golden age, it doesn't matter. There is a little bit or a lot of channels. Right now, there seems to be a lot. Like two wars happening with maybe a third one brewing, right? Wars going on underground tunnels. Eco economical wars, wars going on defacing of currency, printing of currency, inflation, deflation, stagflation, any kind of inflation. It sounds like the inflammation running through people's body. So it's all the time going on. But what are you going to choose? Because the Buddha said, whatever you focus on long enough, 
you become that focus. So prayer means to ask. Meditation means to listen. Contemplation means to become. What will we become? Why not be one with the mission? Why not be one? Some people are getting that. So let's look. We started on the web. We created Ascension Tours. We're looking at retreat, a ranch, and a lamasery. And now we're getting ready to set up wellness centers. Can you imagine how that has happened? We're doing that in the midst of all this chaos. And it's going to happen. You see God's will and his hand in this. And he's protecting this. And he wants this. His holy angels want this. Finally, humans that they can work with, they said. Finally, humans they work with. Nobody's attacked. That's not going to stop doing. From God's will shall be done on earth through us as it is in his heaven. Amen. So that's what we come to do. So remember, keep your eye on the prize and always yield to the divine. Do your daily spiritual practices. Don't miss. Do your daily Tai Chi Gong. Don't miss. Don't miss. Baraka Bashide, may the blessings be to you and your glorious family. I will see you tomorrow on the Saturday version of Risaji Speaks. God bless to you all.